service will still be the managing agency. Okay? You can still hunt and fish. Okay? You can continue the water quality enhancement by continuing to apply limestone fines. Rubinsky's deal, you know, down on the, uh, you know, putting in the limestone fines for the acid rain reduction. Let's continue that. We want everybody to be involved with the proposal. We want something all user, or we want something all user groups can provide input. No timber harvesting. We'll have public meeting to solicit opinions. You know, these are all the, the talking points of the proponents. The facts are, the president designates national monuments without congressional approval. That big rigmarole on the entire forest plan process that involves every single state stakeholder, this is nothing but a backdoor attempt around the public process to determine how the forest is managed. It's a backdoor attempt. It is 100% unethical. There is nothing moral about what these folks are trying to do. They are taking the public. Look, Go ahead. Well, I have a question about that. I'm confused. Um, if, if it's a backdoor attempt, then that means that, say, the president signs a national monument proclamation, that you're saying that would exclude the Forest Service from having a public series a, 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 meet, a series of public meetings? The, the plan, and, and I'll get to that here in just a second. I'll okay. hold that thought for just a second. Okay. Now, there's two ways that, that monuments have been designated by presidents in recent years. There have been some that have went through congressional approval or con congressional recommendation, and the president signed it. Obama signed five monuments into existence with the stroke of a pen about a month and a half ago. There was no congressional recommendations involved with that. He just did it. So there's a track record with, with the way he does things. Private mental rights, we mentioned that. They supersede any designation. All the collaboration promoted by the proponents, everything you're talking about for this proposal, none of that means a hill of beans. And the reason for that is is because the plan is not written until after the designation is made. Once they say it's going to be a national monument, then that is when the plan is written. So that's when they set the rules. That's when they set the rules. So is basically, the Forest Service involved in that? The Forest Service will be involved I mean, with assuming, that. I mean, ours is a Forest Service property, so it would be the Forest Service that would be involved if it got that far. Absolutely, okay. yes. The Forest Service would be involved. Yeah, but the president can give the parts of it. That's the oh yeah, I mean that's the the whole thing is I mean it's all subjective. It's just you don't know what's going to happen. But you sat over there in that meeting. If anybody was at the meeting, there there was two um, from that group. You know the whole premise is is that the Forest Service just is, they're not doing a good job. Yeah. You know they're just not doing a good job, or this would not even be an issue. But even though they, there's this mistrust of the way the Forest Service is doing things. And the mistrust of the way the government's managing that property, as soon as this becomes a monument, then, buddy, we trust the government. They're going to write that plan exactly the way we all want it, the way all the stakeholders at these public meetings want. I mean, really? And this same group that you see that's pushing this, they were up here in this very hall last summer when we had the way we worked displayed. Did anybody get to see that? When we had school kids coming in from all over the state and we had the big logging, the Smithsonian quality display here on the, the heritage of the logging industry in this county. It was right here in this room. And those same people, they promoted that just like it was our hair. This mural over here on the end of the building, awesome mural, depicts the logging history of this county. The exact same people that were promoting that at this time last year, last summer, are now throwing the logging industry under the bus. And that's what it's about. They want to end commercial timber harvesting on the forest. That is the primary goal of the Wilderness Coalition. Don't cut trees. And all of you all know that multiple use, diversity, and cutting trees is important. If you don't let the sun hit the, the, uh, the forest floor in a spruce forest habitat, you've got problems. It's big problems. And that's what it's about. So you're looking at a political plan. I mean, it's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's all. Mr. Costello did say on the other meeting that one of the things that he was opposed to was the fourth manager plan. He, he's made that statement. Oh, yeah. Well, that's... That he's opposed to that, and, and if they have, if they get the designation, then they'll have a permanent plan where nothing can ever be changed. Right. Actually, that's a good point you bring up there, because at that meeting, one of the things that several people brought up, myself included, was that 
I wouldn't like a plan. People said they wouldn't like a plan that was rigid, that, that we understand that, that uh, they had to sign off on to be a national monument, that a plan would be developed. But we would hope that plan wouldn't be fixed, solid. It needs to be like the forest plan, right. which can And, and I talked to several people over there that were in favor of it, that he had talked to, but they had no idea that the plan, that the Fort Management plan, had that much public input into it. They were shocked when they found that out. Well, that, that's kind of what my question was, Colin. I'm confused about. Um, in a sense, it sounds like the Forest Service wouldn't be allowed to have the public meetings ever at all on this issue. And my question is, would they be allowed, let's say, let's say the President did sign this thing, and all of a sudden we've got a national monument on our hands, like it or not, um, then the plan has to be written, is that right? Yes. And would or would not the Forest Service be involved in, in, in that point? The, at, at that point, the best information that I have is that every available resource that the Forest Service has, okay. every available resource in the South Zone, would probably be required to complete this plan, and it would probably take two years, and it would take every resource, every dollar that they have in their budgets to create this plan, and none of it will be for approval for through the congressional delegation. It will be approval by the president's designee on how he wants. So the political hammering will continue through that entire process. For two years or so. The Forest Service can't come out and say that they're against this. Yeah, because they're a regulatory entity, is that right? They're, they're well, that's because they're a public entity and they yeah. come out, can't come out against a citizen-driven right. initiative. Right. You can't do it. You know, it's just like I can't get up here, you know, with my position with the National Wild Turkey Federation and badmouth of an elected official. You know, that's, that's, there's just rules on that type of thing. You know, but, I mean, I don't know how to put it, but well, I can tell you there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of problems with the National Forest if they, if this okay. goes through. You know, I mean, it, it's this just... This the fees, the permit fees. This may be a question for Randy. I don't, well, I don't mean to interrupt you so much, but I'm confused about this process. I'm glad you're here to help us understand it. If there are going to be fees, is it the Forest Service who sets those ultimately? I don't, uh, th that depends. Okay, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. Okay. My aspect and my involvement and my focus of energy is not on this going to the National Forest or the National Park. Right. That's not an interest of mine. I mean, I won't say it's not an interest, but the National Park Service has a $14.5 billion backlog for maintenance right now. I don't think that they want to take on more property. But there is a management plan. It is being managed well. It's being managed for multiple use. And if you go to the meeting, if you were at the meeting the other day, there were flip charts and stations all the way around the room. And you could go around and you could make comments that were put on the flip charts. And once that was done, I went around and I took a picture of every single flip chart. And I wrote word for word, misspellings and all, no ad lib, every single positive comment that was put out that night. That was put on those charts. And you can have it. There's one of the things I'll send you. I've got the list. If I had time to go through those, overwhelmingly, the majority of the people wanted the same. And I, want, I have a copy for you to take tonight. I want you to read that. Everybody says, you know, make sure this doesn't change. Make sure that doesn't change. Now, there are a couple, you know, that are, per but overwhelming. I mean, and you can look at it yourself. It's black and white. It's not subjective. It's a fact. And if anybody doesn't believe and they think I made it up, they can have a picture of the copy of the pictures that I took. Of the flip charts, you can read them all. Now, the only difference is, is you also had the opportunity to fill out an index card and submit that with comments. And I feel pretty sh certain there'll be some revelations on those cards that we didn't see that night that will be adamantly for this, this uh, designation. But on that same note, I also took pictures of about six postcards word for word. And if they don't show up at the May 20th meeting in the comments section, don't you think I may not get escorted out of there? Good for you. Because it's going to get ugly. That's what because there's a lot of stuff in this <laughs> that is, I mean, it's just outright smoke and mirrors. And I'm telling you, you better do the read. Don't believe me. Hell, half of you don't even like me. Get on the internet. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> don't get mad. He's going to whip nobody's butt. It's all right. It's all right, okay? But I like all y'all.
<laughs> but I mean, don't believe me. I'm telling you. If there's one thing that I tell you that's not that you wonder about, I'll tell you exactly where the information comes from. It's a fact. And when you listen to the proponents of this, you listen to how much of this is all theory, all proposed, all values. There is so little. They can't tell you the boundaries. They can't tell you. I mean, they can't tell you anything. And the first time I met with Michael Costello, we talked about prescriptions. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't even know where to, where to start or end on that. Now, you know, we've, there's local support. Randy may mention of me resigning from the Pocahontas County Board of Convention Visitors Bureau. I was the president of the Board of Directors for the Pocahontas County Convention Visitors Bureau for the last three years. Been on the board for about nine years. Uh, we have a budget of about $750,000 a year from the hotel motel tax. We do a lot of good things in the county. When this all came up, Gil Willis called me one night and he said, I got a guy coming to a meeting next month. And he said, he's want to make this pitch about this proposed national monument. Well, Gil thought I wasn't going to be at the meeting. Well, my plans had changed. And I told him, I said, well, good, Gil. I said, I'll be there. Well, he said, I just have a favor to ask. If you would, he said, just kind of keep, you know, Keep this to yourself. You know, don't talk, you know, to people and get people all stirred up before the meeting. Okay? So, I was like, Gil, I'm president of the board. Gotcha. The meeting comes. I'd done a little research. I'd met with Michael Costello. Saw a lot of red flags. Went into the meeting. Michael Costello gave his pitch. And I... Started asking questions, and I told the board, I said, i got some issues with this. I said, let's hold it over 30 days. Let me come back with some more information, and we will discuss this further. Well, then people on the board started asking specific questions about when they had talked to Michael. So what I come to find out that night at the meeting is that Gil with some, and Michael on his own, had went around and individually talked to board members, the weak-minded individuals with the inability for abstract thought and thinking out things for themselves, and he had that boat set before he ever walked in the room. So Gil had promoted this with him, what he had asked me not to do. At that same time, I had just finished signing all the papers, and put my neck out for this new building and for a whole lot of improvements with the CVB. You know, I'm not, well, maybe I am asking for a pat on the back. I'll just say I put in a lot of time to try to improve that agency. And I was pretty mad. They made a motion. I told them, I said, I'd like to have 30 days. Gil said, there's a motion on the floor. I got a second. They made the vote. They pushed it through to support this that night. I stood up handed my clipboard to the vice president, and I walked out the door, and I haven't been back since. So there's your main push and support on this end is Gil Willis. He's the one that, that was working on my end. So that's the story on, that's the story on my non-involvement with the CVB. And that was a decision of the board, not the staff. The staff that works in that building every day are as good and dedicated people as there are on the face of this planet. With that board, and like I said, there were four people on that board gone that night. It was a done deal before they ever opened the doors. So, you know, that, that's how it was. That's the way it is. And there's the facts. What do you think Gil Willis is motivated? Gil told me, and you, you know, you can ask Gil. He'll talk to you about it. He's a proponent of this. Gil thinks that there would be an influx of money for, like, maintenance on the scenic highway through the, de the, the National Monument name and designation. He thinks that there would be an a, a influx in tourism and then like a like a additional funding given to the Forest Service for Maybe maintenance. His, his interest in it will help his business. Bring well, more. you know, I, I mean... No question about that. Hey, you know what? I, if, it helps, if it helps business and stuff, anything that helps business is good, but at what cost? If it's about tourism and business, here's what we do. Let's pick out two, three, four, let's pick out 20,000 acres, 20 of the 70,000 acres, and let's open it up to ATVs. There you go. We know that that'll bring in gazillions of dollars every year. There you go. I went to Gilbert two months ago. When I left there back in the 90s, when I lived down that part of the world, that place was a ghost town. Now there's brand new Holiday Inns, brand new everything because of the Hatfields and McCoy. Now, am I saying I propose I support ATVs? No, I'm not. I do work some places. But I'm just using that as an example. If it's about economic input and jobs, you know, and it, that's, that's the whole bailiwick. I mean, yeah. at what cost? 